Hi, and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior trainer and tech support here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's blog will be dealing with the creation of annotated text, annotative tags, and annotative attributes, which will all work together. So, let us begin. So, in order to uh, have some sort of context to the creation of this uh, annotative objects that we'll be dealing with, and what does actually does that actually mean in regards to sizes? Let's go ahead and create a rectangle that would be the uh, representation of a door leaf, which would be a, a rectangle that is a size two inches wide by thirty six inches long. So let's go ahead and do that by going to the home tab here, and we'll go to the rectangle. We will say that the rectangle is going to be here. Then we go over here to the options of the dimensions for the rectangle, and we will say that the very first value is going to be 2, in the x value, and then it's going to be 36 in the y value. And now what we do is we'll go ahead and place it. Okay, now I've just noticed that our um, units are not quite what they should be. So let's go ahead and set our units up by going ahead and uh, say show menu here, format units, and let's switch that to architectural and a accuracy of 1 over 64th and say OK. So we just set our units up and we can then say see what the size of this object is by going into the quick measure and we see that this is going to be two inches by three feet just like we want it very well let's hit the escape bar to release that command secondly we will now create an annotative text style which we will do by going to annotations we will go to the little arrow here that indicates the existence of a dialog box which is the text style creation dialog box we will begin with the standard that forces us to go through every one of the parts that are necessary to go ahead and create our annotative object, okay, or text style. In this particular case, we will use the standard, as I said, to say new. We will call this one general text or gen text. And we'll say okay to that. And the important part of this is not so much the, the font styles or all that stuff, but it is in here in the size, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is invoke annotative. And then here, this is the size to which I want my text to be actually printed at. Now, if you remember in the days that we used to draft by hand, all of our general texts were actually 330 seconds tall which if you put a ruler to it, would be the scale factor value at a quarter inch, of course, we're talking about in this particular example, would be four and a half inches. Now, it's not the four and a half inches that we write in the paper text height. It's the actual true height if we were to put a ruler, not a scale ruler, a true ruler to the text, it would be 330 seconds. So we'll score, let's go ahead and do that. Three over 32 is our text height. The only other thing that you can do if you want to or not, I do it because it just uh, compresses the text a little bit and makes it easier for me to work with, which is the width factor. I don't use a point, uh, 1.0, I use a 0.75 width factor value. Okay, once this is all done, I'll go ahead and say apply and close, and we will now go to the next step. We will now go ahead and uh, define the attribute okay for this particular door tag that we're creating and so we go to the insert and in insert we go to the blocks definition define attributes and because the gen text is the one that we are using as a default text style it automatically becomes the textile used here. We can switch it here. Obviously, we know that, but we're going to leave it the general gen, general text. And we will see that because it's using the general text, it automatically invokes annotative and gives control of the text height here in the attribute to the gen text. 
we will continue then to go ahead and define the tag name, which is going to be door underscore number. Remember, there are no spaces or symbols other than underscore here. In the prompt, that could be a proper sentence with proper symbology. And for the default, I personally like to use three question marks that identifies the um, offending attributes as missing an answer. I use three question marks. It's you can't miss it. You can't miss it and you can't confuse it. It's three question marks. So we'll go ahead and write three question marks. As far as the justification, though, is concerned, I am going to change the justification here from left to middle center. Now, the reason why I'm using middle center is because there's going to be a shape drawn around that that would contain the actual an 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 attribute. And that with the uh, attribute and the shape can then define our tag. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, here, we have said that it's specified on screen, so we're gonna to have to say where it is located. So we'll say, okay, and we're gonna place it right about there so it's easier to see, right? And you'll notice that this is a 330 seconds. This is a two inch width, okay? This has not been scale factored. It's not going to be until we actually start to play with scale. So let's go ahead and finish looking at the creation of the annotative tag. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. Now, if I go ahead and select this item this way, I have this particular grip, and then we have the middle center grip. This is the grip that's going to serve as the point or center point of our ellipse that encapsulates what's going to actually be showing through this uh, attribute. So we will go to the home, draw, ellipsis, center. Okay, let's make sure that our object center is already set to running, which is, let's see, center, but insertion point. Insertion point is the one that I'm looking for because the uh, this actual item that we're looking for is the insertion point of the attribute. So I need to make sure that that particular Sorry, I turned it off. That's on. But we haven't defined the insertion point, which is defined as a running object snap by clicking here, as we already know. Okay, now that we've got that, when I approach the annotation from the bottom, I get that little double box. That is the center, okay? Or the insertion point or the center of my ellipse. So they both coincide, and I click when I see that particular little icon. Click. That's going to define the center. It's asking me now to define one axis and another axis. For me, this is my major axis and this is my minor, but because I need it nice and straight, I am going to invoke the ortho, um, the ortho mode. So it's nice and straight. And I go, this is one character. This is two characters. It's equal on both sides. So this is almost four characters, you could say that would fit inside this particular ellipse that we're drawing. So we'll click here. And as you see, it goes exactly as I defined it. Now that's my major axis. Let's go ahead and define our minor axis. So it's wide enough, so it encapsulates at least three fonts completely. And we'll click. Once this is done, what we need to do is now define the door tag block that is composed of these two objects. Now, that could be composed of many more attributes that are invisible. My uh, advice to you at this point is that whenever you want a very specific sequence of attributes to be asked of you upon insertion of the block, you select them when you create the block in that order. In other words, you would be going from the first one to the second one to the third one to the fourth one in the order you wish, wish them to appear when they are going to be shown to you in the dialog box. So let's go ahead and escape here for now. Let's go to the um, insert block definition, downward arrow for the create block, giving us the creations of block options, and we'll go to create block. Here we're going to give the name for the uh, 
particular tag that we're doing is going to be door, oops, not zero, zero, but door dash tag. I am going to go ahead and define what objects make up this particular block. I like to always select my shapes first, whatever, however many there are. And then I like to select my attributes in order. Since there's only one, I select this one. If I had more, then obviously I wanted to ask me what door number this is as first. I could then ask what's the door size, or then what the uh, hardware are, finishes, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay? But in this case, we only have these two objects, okay? So we say enter to say we're finished selecting what is composing this block, okay? And it tells us two objects are going to be made up making this particular block up. Now we're going to say the insertion point. I'm going to say pick the insertion point. It's going to be the center of this particular ellipse, which is already set as a running object snap. And you see the little circle. That is my insertion point, And I click on that. Second, or rather, the last, a couple of last things that I really want to do is first, and this is the most important one. Remember, we're creating an annotative tag. It's that this tag is annotative. Okay. Secondly, I need to tell it, okay, that the description if I so wish to input here is an annotative door tag. Okay, once I have everything defined the way I want, I go ahead and say okay. And because it's going to say it, this is selected to delete whatever the uh, objects that compose the block uh, are gone or will be del deleted, I'm going to leave it as is because I know that it will disappear. Never fear, we will go ahead and then insert it. So let's go ahead and say OK to that. And as I said, it disappears. Let's zoom out a little bit so we see what's happening when we go ahead and insert our block. OK, we go to the insert, block, insert. There's the new door tag that we just created. And we go ahead and insert it. Now, you remember I told you about the order in which things would be asked of you? This is what I was talking about. Okay, depending on which ones you select first, second, third, and fourth, the order, they would appear here. In this case, we only have one attribute, therefore it's only showing me one. And we'll go ahead and say, let's give it a number of 101. Okay, and we'll say okay. As you notice, the tag itself is tiny because this is actually based on a 330 seconds text height. Okay, but watch what happens when we actually start to change the scale fact, the scale factors. How do we change the scale factors? We change them right here. Okay, so if we open that up, there's our scales. Let's switch it to a quarter. Look at that. Let's go ahead and move it. It's a little close. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Clip it, clip it, and place it. Okay, escape. Let's go ahead and switch the scale and see what happens again. Look at that. Okay, we uh, kind of disappeared something here. Let's go ahead and undo this here. Okay, and let's go ahead and change the scale value here for, um, uh, let's say, three, 130 seconds. Okay, I think I know what happened, so let's go ahead and undo here. And let's go ahead and uh, put this back where it was. Here, let's go ahead and say it's right there. Okay, and let's go ahead and switch this scale factor up. There we go. It, the, the thing is that I actually move the ellipse rather than uh, the ellipse definition rather than actually going ahead and moving this one. Don't use the grips. The grips are going to uh, mess up your whole setup here, okay? Just so you know. But now you see how to actually resolve. Um, a possible error. In that case, that was a user error. It wasn't actually a design error. It was a user error. Why? Because I chose to use the grip rather than just go ahead and move my object in this fashion. Okay. But let's go ahead. Oops, I did it too much here. Let's go ahead and bring it back down. Let's go ahead and move it back to where it was and see what happens when we actually go ahead and change the value again. Okay. It continues to change, as you can see. Now, 
the question is, how is that happening? Why is that doing that? Well, there's a couple of buttons right here that are very important. We have the button that says show annotative objects, okay, which is basically if I go ahead and, and turn it off and I change my scale, uh, I have to select that some of these things will not appear, okay? That would be that one. But the more important one of these two really for me, I think is this one right here, which is the add scales, uh, add annotative scales automatically. Basically, it's actually adding the definition of uh, the annotative object per the scale factor in the properties. So that means, or rather the question should be, does that mean that it has to be done automatically or can I do that manually? Well, the answer is you can do that manually. Okay, if you actually take this off and, and I change the scale factor here to let's say 128, it goes back to the 130 seconds. You see that? It doesn't go back, go uh, go up to the to the ones. And now if I turn this off, nothing appears. Although this is 330 seconds, it doesn't appear. You see that? Okay. So the question now is, how can I actually go ahead and add the 128 scale here? Well, if I actually select the object in this fashion or any fashion that you want, as long as you select the single object and you right click and go to properties, okay, and you come over here to the annotative scale, which is right here, and I open that up, I find the little button that opens up a dialog box. Now, in this dialog box, we can add or subtract. Let's say, for example, we want to subtract the actual definition of a one-to-one. -one. We can actually go ahead and delete that definition. You see that? Or we can add that definition or any other definition that we want by going to the add. And uh, we said that the 128th is the one that we wanted, which is this one right here. We're going to add that automatically to this object and we say okay to that. Okay, once we say okay here, everything changes. See that? Let's go ahead and turn this off. And this is the scale factored values of all of the items that we created, 330 seconds, at 120, 1 over 128 scale. If I switch it back to a quarter, it's already showing because this definition is already in the properties scale factor definition list. With that, this has been Jim Cuervo for Digital Drafting Systems. I hope you've enjoyed it, and to the next one, thank you for watching.